make deals with whoever controlled these this area, and there wouldn't the, the derby was off limits. And off the, the streets, out of the hands of criminals. Crime, whereas, just during that time, you know, and I, it's not like that anymore. Apparently, too many bleeding hearts. I don't think it could have ever been off limits. Maybe you're talking about white criminals, but. Sun crime is so random. Like he said, like it could be somebody arguing down the street from the dirt from where the dirt derby lets out. Let's just say no. I just mean the the organized crime part. All right, yeah, but that's not the gangs. They knew that area was off limits. Don't go breaking into the cars. Don't go mugging those rich white folks. Oh well, that's that. I think I think we're in a new day. Off the streets, out of the hands yeah, of criminals. That, that time has passed. That's what two Metro Council members are aiming for with a bipartisan resolution directed at the General Assembly. WLKY's Randall Cam was at the meeting tonight. He joins us now live in the studio. Randall? Vicky, two Louisville Metro Council members, one a Democrat, one a Republican, co-sponsoring a resolution which would allow for the permanent destruction of firearms used to commit crimes rather than have them placed for sale at auction. But it's the state that'll have the final say on whether or not that will happen. This breaks my fucking heart. If a heart. gun has been used to murder a child, then that gun should be taken off the streets and destroyed. Why would anyone want guns back on the street that has murdered a family member, a friend? Tammy Hawkins representing West Louisville. Jeff Hudson representing East Louisville. Working together to encourage government at the state level to allow guns used in crimes to be destroyed. Their joint resolution passed Metro Council unanimously. It calls on the Kentucky General Assembly to enact bills empowering Louisville Metro government to permanently destroy abandoned, confiscated, or forfeited firearms in its custody. Hawkins represents the Russell, Parkland, and other neighborhoods in West Louisville. She says gun violence in her district is out of control and hopes state legislators will hear her cry for help. Out of control in her. No, that that Russell neighborhood is the one. Yeah, that's Rihanna. That's uh, Muhammad Ali, um, whatever Boulevard or whatever. But he, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Gun violence in her district is out of control. In the horse she decides to ride on, the car she decides to get in is destroying the guns that have been used in crimes there are no solutions there are no solutions and if i was a politician i would just be like all right cool we'll destroy the guns don't you worry there's no ones out there this is insane that this is this is the fucking train she decided to get on all and that woman, I bet, I bet if you ask that woman, she'd say she's a Christian, right? She's a Christian woman. Oh yeah, of course. Gun woman herself. Okay, when Cain killed Abel with a rock, did God blame Cain, or did God blame the rock? Yeah, I mean, this is not even a, like that. This is different. This is. This is not even gun control. This is symbolic. Not the this gun's is, fault. It's this terrible. Is, this is nothing. This isn't even gun control. This is just pure nothingness to destroy a gun that the police have confiscated as evidence in a murder or something like that to now destroy it. They're going to use that to go into any crime that they seize. Okay, uh, fine. Fine, you destroyed the gun. But crime and your gun violence in your neighborhood is out of control. What are you doing about that? Nothing, because there are no solutions. This is the only thing she can get a win at. She's looking for a W. She's looking hey, for a- hey, and then let's think about this too, though. Uh, in all actuality, you destroy a gun used in a murder in 2022, right? A fucking woke uh, DA pulls up that case in 2033, 2040, 
and now it's no murder weapon because you destroyed the gun. Exactly. What's going to happen? Exactly. Good point. Troll and hope state legislators will hear her cry for help. I just don't want anyone on a state level or any other level to take for granted that just because it hasn't happened to you or it hasn't been impact to you or your family that you overlook this. 146 people were killed by firearms in the Metro last year. Some of those guns were sold by the Louisville Metro Police Department to Kentucky State Police, who then auctioned off the guns. LMPD made between $100,000 and $200,000 selling guns to KSP last year, according to Hudson. He says 31 guns that went to auction wound up back on the street. 12 of those were used to commit yet another crime. How would you feel if your, your child That's had a been good murdered? Average and that gun was used again to kill someone else. Despite the passionate pleas from Hawkins and Hudson to curb gun violence by making sure guns are never used to commit a crime twice, Hudson doesn't have much hope state legislators will allow Louisville Metro government to destroy confiscated guns. I don't think it will pass, but I'm hopeful that it would. And if, if we didn't su show our support for it, then shame on us. Louisville's mayor nope, has shame on you right now for showing your support for that because from you're a dollar the gun point, instead of the person. All this does is jack the price up, uh, the uh, value of a gun. That's all it does. The family of a woman murdered is speaking out tonight. 40-year-old Jennifer McDermott was killed in Old Louisville early Saturday morning. It happened at Woodbine Street in I-65. WLKY's Randall Cam spoke with her father this evening. He joins us now live in the studio. Randall, does he know why someone would want to hurt his daughter? Well, no, Vicki, he has no idea. Jennifer's dad describes his daughter as a kind soul with no enemies. She had a good heart. She was a very loving, kind, caring daughter. She was my oldest daughter. This is where Jennifer McDermott died. Her father says Jennifer had fallen on hard times and was living under this overpass along I-65. Joseph McDermott says his daughter was hit by two bullets, one in the arm, another, the fatal shot, in her side. The bullet penetrated both her lungs. So far, the person who fired that fatal shot has not been caught. McDermott says Louisville Metro Police detectives working to solve his daughter's murder have been helpful, but are tight-lipped about the investigation. We don't know what caliber she was shot with. They didn't find a gun in the location or anywhere. As the hunt for his daughter's killer continues, Joseph McDermott is left to grieve a daughter who once had big hopes and dreams. Jennifer was born and grew up in Ohio, but moved to Louisville to attend Sullivan University. Her goal was to one day become a chef. Now, Jennifer's family is faced with making final arrangements. A GoFundMe account has been set up to help cover the cost. We're cremating her because it costs way too much to do a whole transport all the way back. And any anybody that's willing to help, we greatly would appreciate that. Yikes, man. These bladders got a rough down here in Louisville, man. Shit. Fuck. Louisville police plan to release body camera footage tomorrow of an officer shooting two unarmed teenagers. The shooting happened last Monday in the Chickasaw neighborhood. Police have continued to label the shooting as accidental. WLKY's Randall Cam has been following this story. He joins us now live in the studio with new information. Randall? Vicki, we went back to the Chickasaw neighborhood and talked with a witness. She says one of the bleeding teens tried to escape law enforcement by jumping over her fence. The witness is also disputing the police account of the incident, including the LMPD claim that one bullet fired from an officer's gun hit two teenagers. I appreciate the community's patience um, and while we're doing the quality work and being very transparent, some of the information that's been received. Of course, that's the police chief, of course. And put out there, um, Lynn to be a little bit jaded in that vein, but I'm um, truly committed and being transparent. And then that information will be revealed um, as quickly as possible. That transparency may come Friday. LMPD says they expect to release body cam video of the incident, which involves a Louisville Metro police officer shooting two unarmed teenagers as they fled a garage. LMPD has described the shooting as accidental. This is the alley where police confronted the teens. Neighbors who live nearby tell us they heard two shots, not one, 
and also say that police were slow to administer aid after the kids were shot. It was two shots fired, and the police stayed in yes. that alley for hours with red tape and yellow tape. At the end of the day, they did not call the ambulance for these young men. I don't know what they did, if they did steal a car, but they did not help these boys at all. If the body cam video is released. Well, she's, look how eager she is. If, if those boys had shot a fucking one-year-old fucking sitting in the bassinet with a stray bullet and she saw it, she would not get on the news and make this declarative statement. And be, she, it is what it is. It would be like, man, this got to stop. Man, I mean, we need more. They, they need to do something about this. These kids need something to do out here. Oh, my God. It's so bad. We need now. more resources. But because it's police, this shows you that they're not afraid of police. Because if she was afraid of police like she's supposed to be, like they say they are, there's no way she would get out here and snitch on police because it would be retribution. She knows there's no retribution, and if there's no retribution and no retaliation, then you then there's nothing to be fucking scared of. It was two shots fired, and the police stayed in that alley for hours with red tape and yellow tape. At the end of the day, they did not call the ambulance for these young men. I don't know what they did, if they did steal a car, but they did not help these boys at all. If the body cam video is released, we should be able to see whether or not that account is accurate. Since the start of the investigation, authorities have said they were unaware that anyone was shot after the officer's gun discharged. Former Kentucky State Representative Attica Scott tells WLKY News she's talked to folks across Kentucky who are very disturbed. No body cam video has been released. It has been 10 days since the young men were shot. I'm afraid it might be a cover up. I hope that it's not. I would love to be proven wrong, but why is it taking so long? This is why would you say something like that? Why would you put that as a, as a politician, local politician? Why would you introduce that into the public discourse? That it because that's be her stick. Why would well, you? When when both of the teens fled and weren't in the area to be found as oh my, well, they're wounded. Uh, how are they supposed to know they hit anybody? True. Good point. <laughs> doesn't make sense. This is taxpayer funded equipment that should be used the way taxpayers want it to be used. LMPD previously had a policy of releasing body cam video within 24 hours of a shooting involving officers, but the chief says that policy was put in place by the previous administration and is no longer the current policy. Live I'm telling you, man, these people, um, let's see the body cam. On February 20th, 2023, around 6 p.m., LMPD's second division officers received a call from a community member to respond to the 800 block of South 38th Street on a report of multiple juvenile males illegally entering a detached garage with what was reported as a suspected stolen vehicle. Preliminary information reveals that while two officers were conducting their investigation, they could hear movement inside of the garage and had drawn their guns because they didn't know who was inside, how many people were inside, and whether the individuals were armed. As the officers waited for backup, the garage door opened and multiple juveniles ran out. As one officer tried to stop the suspects, his service weapon discharged one bullet. One teen suspect was detained but refused to answer any questions. Neither the officers nor the individual detained were hurt during the incident, and there was no evidence present at the scene that would have indicated that anyone had been injured. About an hour later, a teenage male arrived at Norton's Children's Hospital with what appeared to be a non-life-threatening gun. Oh, so you, like you said, Johnny, look how they leave shit out. That news report was criminal that they left out the fact that the, the kid walked into a hospital on his own an hour later. To leave that out is, in, in knowing how dangerous these situations can get with protesting and fucking activists, that shit is insane, man. And if I have four people running out of a garage, you know, the instant 
you know, you're, you're sitting there waiting for backup. You have no backup. You have four people run out of garage. Boom. You, you, you got a, you got a decision to make. What do you do? Do you duck? Do you cover? Do you, what do you do? They could be running out to shoot at you. Exactly. Salute to um, Laura Bailey. She says, I sold my dad's house after he passed and got the hell out Louisville. Moved to a place where Trump and us everywhere. Guns and hell. No, I didn't vote for this crap. No guilt. Okay, so you didn't vote for this crap. That's good. Salute. Getting the fuck out of Louisville. Sounds like a fucking great place. But you noted Short the start of the story. They got called by to the police by a community member. In other words, by a sister. Yep. Teenage male arrived at Norton's downtown, also with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound. Both teens gave multiple conflicting statements to investigators regarding how they were shot, and both denied being at the 800 block of South 38th Street. So both teens... <laughs> so you got Black women ready to protest about this when both teens are saying they weren't there. <laughs> both shot teens are saying, well, I wasn't there. I wasn't over there at that fucking... At the place, at that, at that, um, at that shed, I wasn't there. All right, plot twist. What if they weren't there? They just happened to get shot somewhere else. Nah, these are the teens, man. But yeah, oh, of course it is. But yeah, yeah. But 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 this is this is this is um, this is just insane. They're saying they weren't there, and sisters are ready to protest and hit the streets over them getting shot there. It's just on um, this black list. I listen. Scott Adams told y'all. Saint Scott Adams told y'all, man, stay away from these people, man. Also, and with a non-life-threatening gunshot wound, both teens gave multiple conflicting statements to investigators regarding how they were shot, and both denied being at the 800 block of South 38th Street. Due to the multiple locations given by the teens, officers spent hours investigating at several different locations to determine if the teens had been shot at those locations. After putting together all available evidence, including body camera video, the detectives ultimately determined the teens were at the garage on South 38th Street. What you're about to view is body-worn camera footage from the officers who responded to the South 38th Street incident. Okay. Oh, they have a buffer with no audio for 30 seconds. This feature is intended to capture video of sudden incidents. Okay. So it's daytime. So this isn't night. This was during the day. That's a ratchet looking place. Yeah. Well, they said it was an abandoned garage. That could be a nice shot. This could literally be the last time these guys ever fucking do anything. They could die doing this. This is Louisville. This is dangerous. To think that these guys go out and do this shit every day, all day. Think about how hyped up you'd be right now inside if you're these cops walking around this area, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, the people inside are, are, are on edge. The cops are on edge. Well, they the ones inside probably don't know they're even out there. Maybe, maybe we can move. Hey, two twelve acre radio. You have another car that can start this way. We've got them trapped in the garage.
Hey, I need anybody. I just need to step up. They tried to get out. Now you can hear them. Now you can hear them. They're, they're in there. This is where they need to announce. We're going to have multiple people. I just shut the garage door on them. I got them trapped in. I think they're probably trying to get out the window. This is where, see, it's a fucking mess right there. Bad training. I just can't. I only heard one bullet. We're going to have multiple people. I just shut the garage door on them. I got them trapped in. I think they're probably trying to get out the window. Maybe I'm just kidding. 212 Baker, we got multiple people running. So I just came here. I just walked through this door. You got one? Yeah, I got one. Just, I just walked just to get him. Sir. Sir. Can you see me? Can you see me? Can you see me? I literally have nothing. Just keep him. Keep him. Look how easy that was to handcuff that kid. Look how easy it was. That kid just submitted nothing. <laughs> Look at that's what not resisting looks like. Exactly. Ben, you I'm a, I'm gonna need a CEO. So he doesn't have his finger on the trigger. Damn. That's that's protocol. That's what they teaching y'all to not have your finger on the trigger. Yikes. Yeah, that way it doesn't, it's not supposed to go off. So when that door popped open, he must have saw something. Maybe one of the what kids had a gun. Him. Maybe one of the kids had a gun out. Who knows? They're gone. <laughs> they already got away. So you never know if they had a gun on. And they got it blacked out. Because they don't want you to see their faces. What a tough job, man. What a fucking shitty job. Any one of those kids could have ran by In with a box cutter. With LMPD cutter. procedure, the officer was placed on administrative... And shitty. laid them, laid that cop's face wide open. Yeah, what a shitty, shitty, shitty job. Oh my god, man! Well, we saw that. We saw the footage from the guy in Australia. He thinks he's getting into a fist fight. Guy pulls out a knife, one punch to the carotid artery, and he he's dead. Thirty seconds later, bleed <laughs> out. Damn. Damn. It doesn't take yeah. much if you get hit in the right area with a knife. You, you're gone. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, the neck under the arm, mm -hmm. groin, mm -hmm. liver. Oh, here we go. We got a great story for Atlanta.